normally if you've been watching my videos I have a certain structure on them and that structure includes starting the video with some background on the car I'm driving and talking about its exterior design and shape and so on but today we're driving something so special that doesn't really care about looks design and stuff like that that I said it would be a better idea to start off talking about the way it drives we're, we're gonna talk about the design and practical side of things later on but for now let's start with the driving section because today we are driving an iconic car a car that has so many fans around the world that it has been produced for six generations this is the sixth generation Honda Civic Type R and it is quite a special thing even though some people would say it's not as special as previous generations and to some extent they are correct because this car unlike every single one of its predecessors is carrying over a lot of things from its I don't know forefather so this generation uses the same engine as the previous generation but with a couple of tweaks done to it we're talking about a two liter four cylinder turbocharged petrol engine that is now good for 329 horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque so roughly 10 horsepower extra compared to the previous generation um, and that was achieved by middling with the turbo of course i'm not talking about software over here uh, i'm talking about physical changes done to the turbo it's a it's, they worked on the uh, rotor they worked on the blades of the turbo they made them more streamlined uh, they worked a bit on the uh, efficiency side of things and they achieved this result so basically yeah all in all it's almost the same engine as on the previous generation but that's not a bad thing whatsoever because this the previous generation car i had the opportunity of driving it was really good um, and i actually enjoyed it a lot so just as you would expect this is a front wheel drive manual car that in my opinion was built for the enthusiasts out there and it is a very niche offer because you would have to take a certain set of characteristics in your mind you would have to want some very specific things out of your brand new car in order to buy this one but let's talk about the way it drives well it's a light car so it only weighs 1480 kilos without the driver so it's really light on its feet and it's quite the beast now according to uh, honda the, the civic type r should have a special geometry up front on the suspension side of things that would allow it to basically nullify torque steer well that's a bit of a claim and i'm going to show you why because let's do a i'm going to show you exactly what i mean so we're going to do a launch not to 100 kilometers an hour but i want to launch this car from um, from zero to show you the way the steering wheel behaves so it doesn't really turn left or right so to some extent they are correct but whenever you're holding the steering wheel while doing these crazy acceleration sprints you do feel it trying to slip to the left or to the right so in other situations i noticed that uh, not necessarily from standstill but while you are actually driving and uh, mashing the gas pedal it does try to wiggle out of your arms so in other situations i noticed that when you're inside a turn for example and you try to put the power down the car really does that so it really hooks up into the ground it has a uh, limited slip differential up front that helps out with that stuff you have the geometry of the suspension up front configured specifically for that um, so everything works together what you don't really have is grip in certain situations so the the front axle has so much power that it's inevitable to lose some grip right now i have the tires heated up 
uh, and I have been using this car on the track as well. If you look at its exterior design, you'll also notice a livery. This is actually used as a safety car in a local endurance series. So I did take it to the track and I did notice a couple of things. If you don't heat up the tires, the car comes as standard with uh, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's. If you don't heat them up, you will lose traction for a while. And that will surprise you because it's not totally predictable now the steering isn't uh, very communicative either so you don't get a lot of feedback but whenever the, the 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 front wheels start to spin you do feel it in the steering wheel so that gives you some some feedback but when you're driving it really hard you do have to make small adjustments like all the time to figure out what the um the front wheels are doing so there's not a lot of feedback but but this is still a, I think, one of the best front wheel drive cars on the market today in terms of driving experience because it feels really well put together. So um, another thing that I love about this car is the gearbox and mainly the throws. The throws are very short and the gearbox is incredibly precise. So the throws are in so precise that you would actually um spend a lot of time i did uh, actually i'm changing gears more often than i should just because i love the, the mechanical feel of the thing what i would have preferred um would have been a different gear knob um to my for my hands it's a bit on the smaller side of things and i think it's a bit too low i would have preferred it a bit higher and a bit with a bigger uh, bulge over here but overall it's great it does heat up in the in, in 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 the summer days, hot summer days, like the one we're experiencing today. But I'm used to it because my personal car also has one of these, and I am actually used to burning my hands on it, um, my hand on it during hot summer days. But I love the mechanical feel of this um, gearbox. Furthermore, I love the clutch. It is not too heavy, but not too light either and it hooks up really low. So you only have to move your foot just a bit in order to feel it hook up. Um, and that's a very good thing in my book because this is a driver's car and you really need to feel it. You really need to feel the, feel the car. The car also comes with auto rev matching, which is also a good thing in my book because it protects the car and it makes you feel like you're a much better driver than you really are. You can of course deactivate it, but if you want to do that, you also have to deactivate the traction control. And when you do that, you do spin your wheels quite a lot, unless they are really well heated up. So even if you have the tires in the proper temperature uh, range, it will still spin them um, for a bit. Now, I want to get back to the engine for a bit, because I want to tell you how it feels to drive this car from that perspective. So the engine is a feels exactly like a big turbo engine, uh, even though the turbo on this car is not exactly that big. So what does that mean? Uh, well, if you've ever driven a small turbocharged engine uh, with massive amounts of power for its capacity, you probably noticed that once the turbo spools up, you get like a whoosh of power. You get a surge of power. Um, now, depending on what kind of turbo that engine uses, that power delivery can be more or less abrupt. So this car uses a fixed uh, geometry turbo. It doesn't use a variable geometry turbo. So that means the power delivery will be sudden over certain RPMs. On variable geometry turbos, the power delivery is very linear. Um, that's because of the way the turbo actually works. On this car, well, the engine is rather soft and dulled down under 3000 RPM. Once you go over 3000 RPM, all hell breaks, breaks loose. And what I like about it is that even though the power delivery is sudden, um, you are fed all the performance you need, all the power you need, all the torque that the engine can deliver up to the red line, which is 7,000 RPM. And to that regard, we also have a light indicator, a shift indicator in the dashboard that tells you when it's time to shift. 
Um, so yeah, that's how the engine feels. It feels like a big turbo engine. The power delivery is sudden over 3,000 RPM. Under 3,000 RPM, the engine is quite subdued. Now, that could be interpreted as a bad thing, but if you think about it, what they did with the Type R is they created a car that can be used on a daily basis. And you don't want all the power all the time when you're driving this car to work or to, I don't know, taking your kids to school because yes, this car is supposed to be a daily driver as well. So basically you don't want all the power all the time because you would go absolutely crazy uh, when you do that. And that means this is a very usable car. You can use it every day with no issues whatsoever because if you drive it slowly, you won't ever go past 3000 RPM. And in that space between, I don't know, 1,000 and 3,000 RPM, it's very docile as you, you would want a car to be around town. And in my book, that's absolutely brilliant. Whenever you're driving it fast on the track or anything like that, well, when you do that, you're always over 3,000 RPM because you're gonna keep this car close to 7,000 RPM all the time. So you won't have an issue with turbo lag or anything like that on the track or when you're having fun with it. But when you're driving it around town, it's gonna be very docile. So that's a mix of both words. And I think they did this on purpose. Furthermore, I was very impressed by how practical and comfortable this car is whenever you are just using it to cruise around like I am right now. So you have adaptive dampers and the suspension is incredibly quiet and incredibly comfortable. Um, whenever you're driving in comfort mode, it does soak up the bumps brilliantly. In terms of wheel size, there have been some changes compared to the old model. The old model came with 20 inch wheels. This one comes with 19s. And I think that contributes to the comfort very much. So I use it as a daily with no issues whatsoever. And these are probably the best bucket seats in the business right now. And I'm not even kidding. They are incredibly comfortable while also providing ample amounts of side bolstering and support. Um, they look great, they are easy to get in and out of, and you do, do feel well cocooned inside this car. So, bravo Honda, you actually did great in this regard. But, leaving that aside, is this a fast car? Well, yes, it is. I'm skipping right now. It's very fast and not just in a straight line because this car isn't about straight line performance. A lot of other cars are doing straight line performance better than the Type R because they have more power and in most cases they have all wheel drive and automatic gearboxes. But this car truly shines in the corners. That's where you will feel the extra grip of the front axle. You will actually, if you want to push it hard enough, you will feel the rear end oversteering so you can actually do oversteer in this car if you wanted to you just have to play with the masses and more important than anything you have a lot of control and you feel in control all the time and that front axle is so well done that it has grip all the time pulls you into the corner puts the power down brilliantly I mean yes it does have moments where it breaks contact with the asphalt but they are not for long and it's understandable considering how much power you have on the front axle. Absolutely brilliant. What I would have liked from this car, I don't know if you can hear it, um, I would have liked a more enticing sound from the engine because it doesn't really sound that great, especially compared with other cars you can find in this space right now. And I'm talking about cars, even from premium brands, that also use a two liter four cylinder with front wheel drive or all wheel drive hatchbacks in the C segment. I'm talking about the BMW M135i, for example. I'm talking about the Audi S3. I am talking about the Ford ST edition because the RS is no longer. I'm talking about the Cupra Formentor, for example. I'm talking about the Cupra Leon. 
cars with 310 horsepower and 2 liter power plants under the hood and they all kind of sound better than this one um, you don't have any pops or bangs or anything like that to make it more exciting and uh, whenever you're using um, plus R mode which is the full attack mode if you will or you can use the individual mode and configure sound and shift points and so on um, when you're using plus R mode you get some fake engine noise pumped inside and in some cars active sound design as it's called by the industry does work on this one doesn't really because you can actually tell it's very very um, fake I also noticed that at certain RPMs something rattles under the, the dashboard over here I don't know what it is um, but that shouldn't really happen so yeah I would have preferred a bit of a better sound because sound is an intricate part of our driving experience it gives you feedback and it makes you jiggle why why do we jiggle whenever we use whenever we see a v8 on the street right why do we why do we giggle whenever we hear a v8 blazing by because we like that sound it's the sound of dead dinosaurs ending up in the combustion chamber so yeah i would have preferred that but that's just one small complaint and that's why I said this car is a very niche product. Let's talk about the practicality of the thing and the exterior design and then we're gonna end. So this is a Type R, so you'll notice it's a Type R from the get-go, especially by the wing in the back. There's a huge wing at the back. And I love the fact that you don't really see it in the, in the rear view mirror because it's almost at the same point with the roof line. So I don't really have any issues seeing out the back, but of course, Every single exterior part of this car is different compared to the regular Civic, apart from the front doors. The, they kept the front doors, but the hood, the front fenders, the bumper, the rear bumper, the rear doors, the rear fenders, everything is different compared to the regular Civic. Um, so yeah, you, you can easily notice that this is a Type R by its beefier and more aggressive design. As I already said, we have 19 inch wheels uh, we have door seals massive door seals on this car uh, and the one i'm driving has this livery because it's being used in uh, uh, motorsport competitions as a safety car so yeah you easily notice this car is different you'll notice the red badges all around and inside the cabin we have this these amazing seats we have red carpeting and we also have a type r badge on the dashboard we have these manual shifter um, the special plus r button over here the star stop button is red and the instrument cluster comes with its own theme for the plus r mode you can also use it in individual mode as i did right now why am i using individual individual mode because i'm setting everything up to plus r mode the throttle the engine the gear shift the gear shift rev matching and so on the sound but I don't want the suspension to go into plus R mode or sport mode because it's a bit too stiff and it makes the car jump around a little bit. I also noticed a bit of tram lining when driving this car, which is unusual, but I kind of understand. I guess that's part of the deal because this car is a sportier model, a sportier version of the Civic. Um, so yeah, it's a very practical car. It's quite big. It's bigger than any of its rivals in this uh, segment for example it's almost 30 centimeters longer than a Golf R and it's almost 10 centimeters wider than a Golf R it's really close in terms of size to the BMW M3 if you look at it so yeah it's big you have plenty of room in the back I don't like the fact that they deleted the middle seat if the standard Civic has five seats why won't this but I guess you wouldn't want to take too many passengers with you because then you would um, raise the weight of the car by quite a lot so you don't want to add any any weight on it basically um, this car is also lighter by 100 kilos compared to the normal Civic which is now offered solely as a hybrid over here in Europe yeah it's a fast car yeah so what's the takeaway then? Is this a car worth buying? Well, as I said throughout the entire video, I think at the current price tag it has, 
it's going to be a very specific car for a very specific niche. In my book, since this car costs 58,000 euros over here in Romania, I think it will have a limited number of customers. And I think it's going to have the same issue all around the world. And that's because the way I see the customer who wants to buy this car is he wants a front wheel drive hatch, he wants a manual front wheel drive hatch, and he wants a Honda. Because within this space, you have a number of choices at this price tag, some of them even premium choices. Over here, for example, the BMW M135i with all wheel drive and an automatic gearbox, because it doesn't come with a manual, costs 53,000 euros, and it's a BMW. The Audi S3 costs 60,000 euros. Yes, it's a bit more expensive, but it's an Audi and you get Quattro. The Cupra Formentor costs around 58,000 euros and it has 310 horsepower. It's an SUV, all-wheel drive, and it has an automatic gearbox and it's faster. The Cupra Leon, same specs, lower price tag, 55,000 euros. You have the Ford Focus uh, ST Edition with 280 horsepower, so a bit less, but it costs just 38,000 euros. Then you have cars like the Hyundai um, i30N with 280 horsepower, which is also around 36,000 euros, so nearly 20,000 euros less. Therefore, I think this car, as brilliant as it may be, as fast as it may be, for a lot of people, it will not make sense financially. I was looking at the car, the previous generation car I had for testing purposes, that was a 45,000 euro car. So this one gained 13,000 euros in terms of price tag in a couple of years. Now I know everything has been getting more expensive lately, but still, it's a lot of money to ask. So in my book, this car will appeal to the Honda fan that wants the Type R badge really bad, wants a front-wheel drive car with a manual gearbox, and that's it. In that regard, manual gearboxes on this kind of cars are becoming extinct. So yeah, you could get this one. But other than that, it's hard to make a case for the new Honda Civic Type R. So that has been my review of the new Type R. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, of course, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to keep this channel alive. Ciao.